when it comes to creating my own masculinity, I was constantly looking for these blueprints of masculinity. And I'll be honest, no offense, <laughs> those blueprints sucked. <laughs> I don't want my masculinity to be threatened by the color pink or because I cry or because I'm scared. When I take away who I'm competing with or who I'm better than, who I can't control, what I can't possess, what is left of my manhood? How do I define myself for myself? So that's where it started for me. I say I'm a man of my own design. I think one of the big misconceptions that people have is that us being transgender is us like hiding something from some people, like deceiving people. You know, I don't owe you an explanation. I don't have to tell you my medical history. I don't have to tell you anything, right? But people feel, it seems like so many folks feel like transgender people are obligated to tell them like the first thing out of their mouth, hey, I'm taking a lot of transgender, are you? And the thing is, is that kind of thinking, it really, it starts to result in violence against trans folks. There's one thing to have to, you know, to have to, to deal with violent systems because you're black, and then also having to deal with these violent systems because you're black and you're trans. Transgender people are seven times more likely to experience police brutality than non-transgender people. Seven times more likely. And 50% of all black trans people have had some kind of relationship with incarceration and with police. So it's like we have to call in like our cis and, and straight uh, community members and brothers and sisters and siblings to stand up for us and to take up some space. And one thing that's really unique about this time is just the the massive mobilization that we're seeing just all over the world. And here in New York particularly, it just it really has been something to, to witness and to be a part of. But just like with the Stonewall riots, people like, took to the streets, they were rioting, folks were, were fighting the police, and we saw some real structural change. It's important for you know, the movements that's happening now to look at these really like radical times of events that have happened in our past and take some cues from them. What happened? How did we do it? It was consistent. It was keeping pressure on them. It was really pushing for policy change as the culture was changing. This is why this is important. If we weren't in the streets the way we were, we would not be having these conversations. Having conversations around homophobia and transphobia within the black community is a, is a touchy subject. But the thing is, is that, you know, nobody is comfortable right now. Nothing is normal right now. But on the other side of being uncomfortable is change.